The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. Can you imagine? Agree with one another in today's world? Can you imagine? I knew something was wrong, that was it. The mic was in my mask. It's only room for my, my mouth in my mask. I ask that we consider where we are this weekend in our journey of faith as we live as Catholics in the lectionary cycle. Think about what's happened in recent times. Let's go back to Easter. Christ was risen from the dead. Last week, the Holy Spirit came down in tongues of fire, and everybody understood every word of every language and every culture. Next week, the body and blood of Christ. Today, Trinity. Any common theme among those four citations of recent experiences for us? Mystery. They're all mysteries. Christ rose from the dead? That's a mystery. We'll never be able to figure that one out as much as we may try. Tongues of fire coming down. Christ breathing on his disciples and receiving the Holy Spirit and understanding every word of every nation and culture. Mystery. The altar bread and altar wine changed into the body of Christ next week's feast. A mystery. Now, the one ever since I was a child, I'm one of those Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, Catholic college cradle Catholics. The Trinity is the one that always got me. And I noticed something, and I must admit I've taken advantage of this myself. Mother Church has given Christians a great gift because if you engage in a theological or spiritual conversation with a fellow Catholic, fellow Christian from another denomination, someone from another faith tradition, perhaps a non-believer, and they're really good, and they really push you. At some point, I'll bet you've done it, you can say, and it's okay, it's a mystery. <laughs> it's a gift that we can say that. And it's not an out. It's the truth. 
Because Christ rising from the dead, a mystery. Christ ascending into heaven, another one of recent time, a mystery. The Holy Spirit coming down in form, physical form in tongues of fire, a mystery. The body and blood of Christ from bread and wine, a mystery. And the Trinity, a mystery. When we say it's a mystery to those that we engage with, it's because we are expressing our faith. We take it on faith. What does St. Paul tell us? Faith is the constant assurance in things hoped for, belief in things not seen. We take it on faith. It's not a cop-out. It's a strong statement, not a, not a statement of weakness. Regarding Trinity, I would share with you my experience over 15 years now as deacon, eight years as parish director and a lifelong Catholic, active most of the time, not all of it, to be honest with you. But what I've noticed is this notion of Father, distinct, unique God. Son, distinct, unique God. Spirit, distinct, unique God. My sense of that, I can't define it, nobody can, it's a mystery. But it has come to my attention that those who I have given spiritual direction to or prayed with or engaged in dialogue with, I'm going to speak now as fellow Catholics, there are those, and you know them, and you may be one, and this is all good. There's no, there's no judgment here at all. There are some who want strict rules. They remind me of the Orthodox Jews. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in a Jewish community. They took their faith very seriously. They needed strict rules, and there really was no thinking, almost. It was a matter of, that's it. That's the rule. That's your kitchen. That's your clothing. That's your life. No conversation. So this notion of needing a father figure, an authority, is something that, for some Catholics, is the piece of the Trinity they most resonate with. Some, I've noticed, need a, a friend. They need a, comp a companion. They need somebody who can, they can sense is sitting right there where Marie is. A friend on the journey every day, all day long. Thus, God the Son. And there are those who might be typically, I've observed, again, these are observations, not judgments, the more creative folks who are attuned to the mystical and the mysterious. They want deep and profound thought and reflection. They're spiritual in terms of their psychological makeup. Thus, God the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? That in this symbol of Father, Son, and Spirit, like so much in our church, there's something for everybody, though all may not resonate with each of the parts of the Trinity in the same way. So back to mystery. These things I've mentioned are bigger than us. Christ rising, Christ ascending, Holy Spirit coming down, body and blood, Trinity. They're bigger than us. There's something very powerful in the sense of these mysteries of our church. Here's another mystery. In the thousands of years since God created us, on the sixth day of his creation, the mystery I reference today, which is contemporary, is we haven't figured out how to get along with each other. Back to St. Paul. Agree with one another. Then you'll live in peace. We haven't figured it out, have we? We have not figured it out. Seven billion people on earth. There have been 60 billion, I understand, who have lived. That may not sound right since, since the beginning of creation because we have so many today. But over the course of human history, whatever the number is, there's been billions of us and a lot of smart folks 
a lot of religious leaders, a lot of government leaders. We haven't figured it out. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. I would suggest to you to hearken what we heard in Exodus about Moses coming down from the mountain. He comes down the second time with the commandments. The first time he got mad at what the people were doing and he smashed them. But God in his mercy forgave Moses and Moses again ascended, came down the second time, which is today's reference. I don't know if you picked it up, but he invited God to join them on their journey. So what do we do about this mystery of the lack of humankind made by God to be loving, a God who loved us so much that he gave us his only son? Well, one of the things we can do and take this seriously, not just as word, but as lived life, invite God on the journey. For you, it may be the Father. For you, it may be the Son. For you, may be the, the Holy Spirit. But make it an intentional invitation to have God join you on the journey. What else can we do? I think, sisters and brothers, based on what's happened in Minneapolis, and that's one out of hundreds of incidences over decades and even centuries. Remember slavery? It was legal. I think one of the things we can do is stop talking at each other. Start talking with each other. So look around. I may be missing this. I don't see a black face in here. Why? Why? I propose to you that these powerful mysteries of God are calling us to something that's above, not below, and that even in the way we live our lives in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, in the parishes of Good Shepherd and St. James, I think our minority demographic in the two parishes combined is about 3%. Why? I want to share with you a statement that we had put up this week on our Facebook pages and our websites. I think it's important for us to take this to heart. And I hope that you don't take this as just words, but an invitation like Moses gave to God to join. This is an invitation to you to join the movement that Christ started 2,000 years ago, a movement of peace and love. Agree with one another. Listen to my appeal. Live in peace. My friends, I say this to you. We at Good Shepherd and St. James Parishes are deeply saddened by the death of George Floyd. Consistent with Catholic social teaching, we believe in the dignity of the human person and that every individual life is sacred. Every single life. Sacred, holy, and of immeasurable value. Our thoughts and prayers and support go out to the Floyd family and to all the others who over the years have suffered from injustice. Also consistent with our church's teaching, we support all those who serve the common good. This includes, but is not limited to, the police, fire, EMTs, military personnel, and dare I say, ministers. We stand behind and encourage all who are working toward racial harmony and unity among all cultures. We abhor violence. In the words of Pope Paul VI, if you want peace, work for justice. Together, with those who are peacefully demonstrating, and I don't know if you know it, but right now, out here on Main Street, there is a high school march given the events in Minneapolis, together with those who are peacefully demonstrating and those who wish to enter into meaningful dialogue, please join us in this important work. My sisters and brothers, enough, enough. I'm not black. None of us should be telling others how the black people feel. 
We haven't lived what they've lived. I'm not Asian. I'm not any other minority. I'm not a woman. Therefore, rather than as a deacon and parish director giving direction on things that I know nothing about, maybe the answer is to stop doing that and to start dialoguing, having a conversation, building a relationship, and stopping judgment. My sisters and brothers, I invite you to join the movement. It's beginning today anew.